A scene cue perfect for presentations, a keyboard visualizer, a Discord overlay, MIDI control over your entire stream, and one tool which has a lot of potential but I'm gonna deem maybe don't use. Welcome to free OBS tools. These don't fall in the plugins or scripts category of videos that I have done in the past as they are just kind of side tools that you run alongside OBS Studio and is released on the OBS forums but aren't directly scripts or plugins. So they don't really fit anywhere. We're covering four you should try and one that you should maybe avoid unless it gets some updates in this video. Stick with me. I'm Ebos Vox, the stream professor, and one of my biggest goals alongside teaching you to learn the streaming software and hardware and things involved is to show you tools that will make your life easier when you're streaming, recording, or what have you, and kind of introduce you to new things that you might be able to do during your stream that you hadn't considered before and help improve your production quality. Today's video is no different. Jumping right in, helpful tool number one we have is called No Board. And this is specifically an updated version, a rewrite they keep specifying everywhere, which I guess I don't care about, but it is a keyboard visualizer and theoretically it could be used to map other inputs as well. It is set up, it's a dedicated EXE that runs alongside your OBS studio and it spawns a blank blue window. Looks kind of intimidating at first because you don't get anything at all, but if you right click and select keyboard layouts, it comes with a variety of preset keyboard layouts, including ones for the little half keyboard controllers, you've got ones for specific keyboards, you've got ones for different layouts, you've got ones for Quake, a couple specific games, and then you have full control to edit and tweak the layout from there to fine tune it to the exact keys or mouse buttons you want shown on screen or even the individual like mouse directions you're moving to perfectly visualize your on your actions during your game. This is super useful if you're trying to show specific use of the computer or your keyboard mouse what have you or specific gameplay techniques. If you're a real high APM, you know, RTS streamer or an FPS streamer that does cool tricks or you're trying to show how to bunny hop things like that, having a visualizer that displays the buttons you're pressing as you're pressing them can be really handy and add that extra level of engagement, involvement or production value to your live stream. It spawns it all in a chroma blue window so you just add a window capture for that window then color key out or chroma key out that blue out of the background and you have the overlay ready to go on your stream pretty neat i think it looks pretty nice it's not the same as the kind that just kind of linearly show the individual keys that you press kind of scrolling up the screen kind of like Terran from line of tech tips used for a little while it doesn't do that but this is pretty cool and i believe it could be adapted to showing controllers or even from some of the discussions on the forums uh second pc capture as well which is pretty neat Next up, we have OBS Scene Queue. This is kind of the perfect tool for those who want to run presentations, uh, webinars, teaching, or you just have a kind of linear progression of the way you think. And I think this will help a lot of people who get confused kind of juggling a bunch of scenes and not really, like they plan out their stream from a linear perspective of I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go to here and go to here and go to here and go to here until they end and having to non-linearly juggle between their different scenes and the way they transition between them and stuff can get really kind of messy and awkward to figure out, especially when juggling hotkeys and things like that. This lets you specify the exact order and you do have control to still switch scenes on your own, but the exact order that it will control your scenes in OBS. So you set up a, a linear timeline of this scene, followed by this scene, followed by this scene, followed by this scene, and then all you have to do is hit next. Instead of clicking the right scene, clicking the right transition, any of that, you just click next and go through your scene list. And like I said, you do still have the flexibility uh, within OBS or your hotkeys controlling OBS to jump to a be right back scene or something like that. And it will still just switch to that next scene whenever you hit next. So you got the best of both worlds there. And then it has some advanced controls to set up dedicated hotkey buttons for other scene controls. Or you can show or hide visibility of specific sources, start or stop recording and streaming and so on. It's, I think, best targeted towards webinars, presentations, and things like that, but I think it offers a lot of value to a lot of streamers who aren't comfortable with juggling a bunch of scenes and ideas, but who want to listen to my advice or other creators' advice and take the next steps to have multiple scenes. I think this helps remove that kind of roadblock or, you know, bump in the road to 
establishing that sort of workflow. Next up, we have a tool called MIDI Control. I'm probably going to do a dedicated video about this. I currently don't know where the MIDI controller I bought a while back is. It's somewhere. Uh, but once I get this set up, this effectively lets you use any MIDI controller as a stream deck or a soundboard or something like that. It can control OBS to start, stop streaming, play, pause media, control volumes, show sources, switch scenes, all of that. It can play soundboard things. It can send messages to Twitch chat and more all from devices you can get for much cheaper than a Stream Deck. Obviously, you don't have some of the dedicated plugins for it. You don't have, you know, the, the screen behind the buttons or anything like that. But it is a lovely little tool to help control OBS and kind of brings down the accessibility barrier there for those who want physical controls but don't want to pay for Stream Deck or just happen to have a mini control surface laying around. So I'll post a link to it in the description with the rest of them. But I'm going to wait to fully cover it uh, once I have things set up. It also has control over the Go XLR, which is pretty neat. Before we get to the last two good tools, I wanted to talk about this one that wasn't so good. This is Twitch Switch. So this was a tool that I really enjoyed uh, the concept of when I was doing my research, and this has been on my list for like a year. It looks pretty neat. Uh, the concept here is it has a UI kind of like GeForce Experience, but the concept here is that it automatically detects the different programs or games you have running based on the foreground window and then will update your, your Twitch category so that you don't have to do that for you. So if you're someone who switches games or programs a lot, it'll help keep your stream updated and even change the title and things like that. It also gives you control to run ads whenever you switch games or what have you. Seems pretty neat. The issue is, is I downloaded it like last night uh, again to start using it for screen captures. And since then, the entire website has gone offline. Not a good sign. Could be a hiccup. I was going to keep pursuing anyway. It, of course, requires running as administrator to install on your system, at which point I did it on my test rig over here. It didn't actually detect any of my games. I gave it as granular of access to my folders as possible, you know, mapping to my game install folders. It didn't detect a single game installed on my system or other program. And then it needs to log in with your Twitch account, and it requests a lot of permissions for your Twitch account, which is mostly mapped to functionality in the software, but I would imagine most people aren't comfortable assigning this level of control over their Twitch account to this kind of program that they're not familiar with. So unfortunately, I couldn't even get it working, and the levels of kind of security trust involved I'm not a huge fan of. So I'm going to not recommend it for now, but if anyone knows what's going on with it or if an update comes, we can talk about it again. Next up, we have Discord Overlay. Of course, there is a program called Discord Stream Kit. However, that requires you to generate dedicated links to your rooms every time you switch channels or whatever, whereas this is a much more flexible thing. You add it to Discord as its own game that it displays the overlay of, and then you window capture that window and key out the gray. Unfortunately, it's using gray as a background, uh, which means when you key it out, you really got to get the threshold right to key it out. But once you have it, then you have a nice Discord overlay you can add over your stream. Now, you could, of course, just use... Uh, the capture third-party overlays option in your game capture hook, but this is especially useful if you are dual PC and your Discord runs on your streaming PC, not your gaming PC, or what have you. So it's another option available in the chest, in the tool chest that works pretty well, is free, and isn't super shady. So check it out. You know how I told you there were five stream tools in this video at the start of the video? Well, I lied to you. There's actually six, but the sixth one is exclusive to my own streaming site called Nebula. Yeah, I've partnered with my creator friends to build our own video streaming site to help deal with all of the issues and algorithms and things like that with YouTube and help make our careers more secure and more sustainable. The site is called Nebula, and we've partnered with Curiosity Stream. Nebula features YouTube's top education creators such as Legal Eagle, Thomas Frank, and MKBHD. My videos are higher quality there, ad-free, and often extended from the YouTube versions. Curiosity Stream saw what we were doing for education and wanted to form an alliance. If you click the link below, you not only get access to Curiosity Stream and their library of thousands of documentary and educational content, but you get access to Nebula and all of our edutainment over there as well. Two sites for the price of one. Better yet, Curiosity Stream is currently running a holiday promotion where you get 42% off an annual subscription. Not the usual 26, 42% off making it less than $12 per year for both sites. Absolutely wild. While you're there, check out Messages from Space to learn about how potential broadcasts of a different kind, this time from radio waves in space, are measured, analyzed, and studied for clues about alien civilizations. Head on over to curiositystream.com slash ebos for the best deal in streaming and get access to both sites for under $12 per year. 42% off. It's just bonkers, just do it. So there you go, four super useful tools that I recommend everyone kind of experiment with and test for your live streams, and one that 
hopefully can be good later, but as of right now, I can't recommend. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. Join us on Discord, discord.gg slash evilsbox. And remember, be kind, rewind.